Hello and welcome to this week's set of short videos on software-based product. Today we're going to talk through what is a software development lifecycle, what are the mindsets and processes to drive this development, what are the indicators to select an approach and the metrics to monitor development progress, what are the tools and techniques to support the development process. Last but not least, what is your role as a designer in the development team and the life cycle? But first, let's have a chat with Cars to get a, the experience of a designer developing the COVID-19 dashboard of our faculty, the building reason. Hi, Cars. Hey, Jackie. You have an extensive um, experience in design, uh, also uh, with digital products. So you led your, your own companies for, for many projects. I'm going to let, uh, let you introduce that, I guess. All right. Yeah. So the project is, is uh, called Building Rhythms. Um, it's uh, part of the um, uh, Campus as a Living Lab project uh, that's exploring various ways of responding to the COVID-19 pandemic using digital tools. Right. Um, and um, so Building Rhythms is a project that uh, Knowledge and Intelligence Design uh, Group is uh, is doing, which uh, which you and I are both part of, um, and uh, this project is specifically about um, uh, using data to um, help people better understand how uh, the various buildings on the TU Delft campus are used. Mm -hmm. um, uh, currently, you know, simply. Um, for example, how crowded um, a building is at a at a certain point in time, uh, but potentially also you know branching out into other dimensions of uh, of of building use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and in this context, so that that's uh, basically what we we see on, on the screen. I, at least one yeah. one of the the visualization, um, and. Uh, you, you are not the, the only one in, in our section work, working on that. It's it's quite a a, a large and, and a, a, I think diverse team uh, yeah. of, of people, and, and I think that that makes the, the core of of our discussion today. Uh, what 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 are the typically the challenges that that you face when designing such a digital product or, or service? I should say. Sure. Yeah. Uh um, well, there, of course, there's many, um, but I think, but I think the you know the challenge that is most relevant for for today's discussion is really about how to ensure that all the different disciplines that make up a project team are able to kind of effectively contribute to the to the quality of the product, mm -hmm. um, and 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 making sure that everyone can really um, uh, shape the product. Um, uh, individually and, and, and kind of integrate all those efforts. Right, yeah. And so as a team for, for solving this, um, this collaboration mm -hmm. uh, issue, I, I should say, uh, you use GitLab, so that's, that's yes. a tool that uh, uh, so, some, some of you guys uh, out there might have heard about GitHub, uh, a similar cloud platform. Um, yes. What, uh, what does it entail? How do you use that? All right. Um, uh, yeah. So um, GitLab um, is 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 for us. Well, there's two sides of it to it really. Well, one is that it allows us to um, collaborate on on writing the code that makes the uh, the system run. Um, by the way, what we're looking at right now is a live. Uh, demo of of one of the visualizations that we've built, um, just to kind of make it more concrete. Uh, what you're looking mm -hmm. at right now is a graph um, showing uh, for the past four hours th all the connections to the Wi-Fi network at uh, at IDE at the IDE building split out uh, across the, the the floors that make up that building. So this is live uh, yeah. and directly accessible uh, to to all pu publicly accessible. Yeah. Co correct. It's not yeah. officially launched yet, uh, but uh, it soon will be. Um, and uh, and so we've got a number of these of these visualizations. 
um, that we are exploring. And we're exploring those for not just for the IDE building, but potentially we can develop these for all the buildings. Um, so we've also got, um, uh, let me just see if this will load. Yeah, so here's the same graph for architecture and the built environment, which um, which has, uh, um, well, it, it looks like fewer devices currently. I think the, the scale is the same. Um, yeah, yeah, the scale is the same. So yeah, there's, there's more connections at IDE than at ABE. Uh, for, for the past uh, more than six months or, already, uh, as, a, as a team, you've been iterating a lot on, on this visualization, going back and forth, uh, making some tests yeah. with different uh, users. Um, and it involved well, our, our, our software, software engineer in the team, uh, some designers, some researchers, yeah. uh, a, uh, uh, a very diverse set of people. Yes. I, I, th I think that's where, where GitLab basically kicks in. Yes, yes. So, um, so I'm just going to uh, open up uh, GitLab uh, here. Um, so this is kind of the, the, the landing page for the project in GitLab. And um, like I said, it, it allows us to collaborate on the code, first of all. That's kind of primarily why these why a system like this was set up. Um, but that, that goes beyond simply you know, writing and changing code. But it also uh, it, it has a lot to do with um, co you know, coordinating your efforts, determining what to work on, and, okay. and also ensuring what I, I would say like quality assurance. So once, once a new bit of, 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 once a new feature has been developed, um, making sure that it's 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 uh, it's correct, uh, you know, there's no bugs in it. Uh, making sure that it it um, aligns with everyone's expectations. Um, um, so before before as a group, you decide that you're actually done with that new bit new bit of code, that new feature, and moving on to the next thing. So that okay. that kind of really leads into. Um, stuff that that many of you will be familiar with from from simple like project management or task management um, systems that, that that's also in here you, this a board like this should be familiar to many of you uh, so-called kan kanban in this first column you'll see all the work that we've identified that we might want to do and then you'll notice that the next column the to-do column is empty this is where we put stuff that we commit to doing so um, the reason it's empty is that we ha recently haven't had a meeting where we select new things to work on. But if we do, we would drag stuff in here. And, and that way we signal to all of us that these are the things that we'll, we want to be working on next. Um, then in the next column, the doing column, you'll see this is work in progress. And you'll notice that all, all these three things um, are assigned to the same person. This is my colleague Alejandra, who's, who's working on all of these things. Um, once you know a thing is has been developed, once a feature has been developed, um, this uh, a card can be moved into this review column, um, which is a way for whoever did the work to signal to the rest of us that someone needs to have a look at it, test it, and and check whether it's it's indeed done. I just I just uh, explained the review column, and then finally here in the closed column is all the stuff that we completed work on. And actually, typically, I, this this one is just collapsed like this. I don't really care about stuff that's in the past. Um, and so, typically but, here, yeah, Cass, who who puts new open, uh, in this column open? Who who put new features here? Any anyone can put new stuff in there. So, and actually, I I always encourage people to do, to do that when you are you know working on stuff and an idea comes to you of something that might be. Mm -hmm. A good an improvement, or you come across uh, an issue of some kind, right? A bug of some kind. That that we all use that 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 column there to yeah to simply uh, to simply um, uh, report uh, 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 new stuff in there. And like I said, we have right. a week a weekly meeting in which we uh, review what we've done, what, what we want to be working on next, and and we use the board in that meeting. Um, and you know, so so that's that's. Um, so why don't we give it a try? Is yeah. it possible to uh, give yeah, yeah, it a little sure, bit more, sure. more technical? Sure, sure. So um, so let's say um, let's say we uh, we we want to change something about this uh, about this graph here, um, and we uh, uh, just just as an example, let's say we want to 
change the background color of this of this uh, of this uh, graph. So um, so first of all, there would we would create a, a new issue here that says um, you know a change background color to uh, let's go with red uh, of graph. Well, um, so uh, you know. Uh, that would be first that would be uh, 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 assigned here or created here and then in a meeting we would say yes let's uh, let's do that let's um, let's work on that so then it moves into here and in this case uh, I you know I decide to work on it so I, I assign it to myself right so here's here's right. a little picture of me uh, to indicate that I'm working on it and everybody okay. knows that I'm working on it so um, yeah so once we've created uh, created an, a, a task here um, you know and decided that we're working on it I sign I assigned it to myself I'm just gonna pop it open now um, so this is where we can hypothetically you know if if, if something like this needs a uh, like let's say a mock-up or some specification mm -hmm. typically that goes in here right you right. describe it yeah. here you can there's even a tab to add designs and that sort of stuff so this is where you collect your requirements if that's necessary. Now we're, we're a very small team and many of the things we work on are very simple, small things. So then uh, a task like this remains very lightweight, like it more or less like it is right now. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, from here, uh, what I'm gonna do next is, is, a, is create a merge request. And uh, what that means is, it, well, it does two things. First of all, it, it creates a branch a new branch for me to work in, uh, which is to say, it kind of creates a copy of the the master the the master uh, branch where the code that is live uh, lives in. So the, the the code that that is shown here lives in the so-called master branch. When we add new stuff, we don't want to add stuff directly to that branch because that would create a terrible mess. Mm -hmm. um, instead, we kind of create our lit own little copy of it in a new branch where we get to kind of play around, try stuff uh, and without having to worry about breaking yeah, the live yeah. version of the, of the, of the. So you, you make your, your little project. send bit basically yes, uh, to exactly. play around, to, to yeah. make your changes uh, yeah. and, and it's uh, yeah. split it from, uh, from what uh, the, the regular user can, can see. Exactly. Exactly. And it's only going to be related to this one issue. So it's only going to be related to changing the background color to red. Uh, if I want to do an additional thing, then I do it in yet another, I create, you know, I do the same thing again. So the, the one important, I guess, point here is that you try to keep each issue and each branch that goes along with it self-contained. Right. Um, so, so let me just create that merge request now. And uh, and so now what we're we're in uh, the merge request that is related to this issue. So we can see here um, that it uh, automatically has created a link back to the issue. Yeah. Uh, which is to say that uh, if we if we close this, as they call it, as if, if we when once we've closed this merge request, that issue will be marked done uh, automatically. Um, and what's also happened here now is that it, it created uh, a branch for me to work in automatically. That's this branch here, which is where the actual code is. So now I'm looking at uh, at that, that specific branch. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody can see that this is going on, right? So this is a, a key thing is that particularly when you collaborate in a distributed manner, but really almost in any situation, it's very nice to have this transparency about what everybody's working on and what the status is of what everybody's working on. Um, so, so now uh, what I want to do is actually do the work that is required to resolve this issue. And for that, I need to uh, um, work locally. So I need to open the code in my, um, in my editor uh, and, uh, and, and do the work. And once I've done that, send the code uh, back to this central repository. And at the moment, this, this code is not yet on my machine. So for that, I need to quote unquote, pull it. I need to pull down basically the copy of the code that was created for me to work in to my local machine. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm gonna do next. Yeah. 
Okay, let's uh, let's go. So maybe and, to, and to bridge yeah. with the cores here, uh, yeah. we get the code on your machine to edit. Uh, you're gonna have your your own uh, software development environment uh, yeah. to 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 make the bridge here. Um, in the course, we use Replit, uh, which is yes. a, a a software um, development environment that is directly yeah. in the cloud, but right. but the principle is the same. We would need to br bring the codes in this environment and, and make the changes, right? Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, so um, uh, here I am in. Uh, I'm just using a piece of software uh, to uh, to work with uh, with the the branches basically. So. Uh, I've opened the same repository that uh, is shown here in GitLab. The indoor crowd dashboard repository is in here. I've opened that, and now I'm gonna uh, click on. You know, I'm just gonna click here to get the latest version of the remote, basically code. Right. So basically, you have a folder with the code on your machine. That that's that's what it is. Indeed. Huh? Yeah. 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 Um, that's that's uh, this this folder here actually. And you'll notice if you look at this, and we go back here to GitLab, and we look at at this this tree here. Yeah. This is exactly the same stuff. We have right? the same folders and the same yes. files. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, so there's nothing to it's it's yeah it's very basic <laughs> in a way. Um, now I, I recall that uh, we created a branch. Uh, specifically to work in, and I'm currently not in that branch. I'm currently in, as you can see here, in the master branch. So I need to switch to the branch related to the issue uh, for me to work in. So that's uh, this one down here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, change background color to red. Um, so I'm going to select that one, um, just you know, just for the to be certain, make sure that I have the latest version. Version, and now. You know, uh, again, if I look at my folder structure, nothing has changed, right? It looks it looks the same, and that's exactly as we would expect it to be, um, because this is a new kind of a new branch. So now I'm ready to make the changes that I want to make on my local mm -hmm. machine. So for that, I'm going to open my uh, my editor, which in my case is Jupyter Notebook, but that's not really important uh, right now. I'm just going to launch it, and and actually, um, as you can see. This this is an editor that runs in my browser. Um, so now I'm going to find the the code that actually um, runs this particular uh, visualization, which is this one. So so here you're looking at the code that controls that um, visualization, and it's all Python code. And actually, uh, the the bit that controls uh, what what the visualization looks like is down here. So I'm just gonna, you know, we like I s said, um, what we what we're working on here um, is uh, changing the background color to red, right? So uh, down here, I'm gonna add a line now to actually do that, uh, which should be familiar to many of you. <laughs> um, so this is actually, you know, this just tells me t tells the code to turn the background color to uh, this color in hex code, which is red. Um, and I can actually test it right away here. So I've made this change and now I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna run my code here locally. So here we go. Uh, here we see the, okay. in, in my environment, we see the same thing as we're seeing live, more or less, right? It looks a bit wonky because it's, it's squeezed into my editor. And you see the, the background is now red. So, I can look at it here, and I can I can uh, immediately uh, check whether it's something that I'm I'm satisfied with. So let's say I am. Let's say I'm happy with this change. Yeah. Um, then I need to um, send it back up, basically, uh, to the central repository, so that other my colleagues can look at it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, oh, yeah, we can see that now um, you, you have. So if I chain. go back here to my yeah, if I go back to here to my to my editor, uh, uh, sorry to my to my Git uh, uh, client, then you can see that it has noticed that we've changed something in one one file. 
Um, and I can add a little description of what I did here. So, so I can say, hmm. actually, I changed the background to red. Uh, I can commit it. So that's that's basically you know putting the change uh, ready to be sent up. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it's still local on my machine, so I, I, it's not accessible to uh, others yet. But so for that, I need to actually push it. Uh, so I'm gonna do that right now. Um, yeah, and wait for a moment. Okay, and now it's sent up. So if we now go back here and go go to this pull request, you will notice um, something showed up here. Uh, which is the commit that I just pushed. Um, so others can see, okay, Cars has added some code and, uh, um, and, and potentially they can now look at it. Right? They can pull it like I did as well and look at it locally and check it out. And actually that's, that's uh, what typically happens next. Right. So, so here, yeah. okay, so um, we are online. Uh, your, your, your change is online, but still in this send bit, in this separate version yes. Um, yes. that we call branch in, in, in the Git uh, yeah. jargon. Uh, and yeah. it's ready to be um, uh, discussed with the, with, with the team. Discussed and reviewed, reviewed. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. indeed, yeah. indeed. Um, so I might, you know, in here to signal that I'm, I'm done. So I'm ready. So this should have actually gone to the uh, doing when I was uh, working on it. And now, you know, this is something that I need to do by hand myself. Now I can say, well, okay, listen, I'm done uh, working on this. Uh, someone have a look at it, right? So I pull it to the review right. column. So the last bit basically cars here. So you, you've yeah. put that in the column uh, review and uh, yeah. we are obviously not gonna uh, see a review from uh, Alejandra or, or, or the rest of the, yeah. of the team here t today. Yeah. So maybe we can yeah. jump to um, another change uh, where where um, you've been uh, yeah. uh, discussing a change and where we can see how it goes. Sure, sure. Um, so um, yeah, so here's an example. Um, um, let me open this old uh, issue here. Um, so here we had a discussion, or here this, the the proposal was to uh, delete. Uh, background lines in in a chart, and actually, if you if you look at this graph, you'll notice that it has no vertical background lines, right? It only has horizontal ones, um, which was actually the result of this change. Um, uh, uh, so here you can see a bunch of stuff happening, um, and um, and uh, if we go to the related merge request, which is this one. Um, you'll see a bit of a back and forth about some of the details of, of this change. Um, so here, uh, you know, Alejandra did made the changes, and uh, uh, I, uh, I I looked at the code, and then I had an opinion. <laughs> so I posted this comment here, which is a comparison between uh, this other chart that we created with and without the vertical background lines. And I actually felt like uh, removing the background lines here, the vertical lines, was a bad idea. Uh, so I posted that here, and then we had a little bit of a discussion also with Hosanna, our other uh, colleague, and um, yeah, ultimately we agreed that um, in this specific visualization uh, we would keep the vertical background line. So actually down here you'll see another bit of code that I added once we agreed that that was indeed a good idea. Um, a bit of code that I added to, to do that. Um, and so then uh, I asked yet another person, in this case Carlo, to test it. It's a good practice not do it. Always ask someone else to test whatever you change you made uh, to uh, prevent mistakes from uh, sneaking in. Carlo had another look at it, and then he uh, he decided to uh, uh, to close the this merge request, which which means the code then gets added to the master branch. And the, the the little branch that we created to do the work in is no longer uh, is is discarded is no longer necessary, and also the issue that goes along with it is immediately marked as uh, as as closed as complete. So uh, uh, yeah, may, maybe we we did not mention that. Uh, so here, mm -hmm. when when you mention an issue, it's 
it's a yeah. task um, that, yeah. that that connect to 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 a piece of code that needs to be to, to yes. be done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Cas. And uh, yeah, uh, all the best for this uh, for this COVID COVID dashboard and board hopefully released soon. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jackie. All right. Bye bye.